Now clap your hands and stamp your feet. So this happens to be a great wild tree. As a local youth coming from Jamaica, my first impressions were because I came from St. Thomas, White Houses, I never really saw traffic lights. And I remember coming to England and driving down the road and seeing these green, gold, and red lights. And I'm saying, what is these things? And it was so dark, it was there was uh, this white mist like a cloud, you couldn't really see anything. I got into the music industry as um, a 14 year old. I'd left home pretty early. In London, what you had was sound systems that had taken the name of Jamaican sound systems. And um, there was a sound called Sir Coxon, who had the name of Coxon in Jamaica. And it was the number one sound in the UK. And they had music that no other sound could play. So when you wanted to hear like a certain song, say for instance, Cherry O' Baby, Coxon might be the only sound who has Cherry O' Baby in the UK. I set up my record shop because um, as I progressed in the music business, I, I ended up being the selector for the sound Coxon and then I became the manager. And in that, um, I met a lot of Jamaican artists and producers and Sugar Mine had, had said to me one day, what are you going to do when you stop playing sound? And I said, Sugar, I would never stop playing sound. And he said, no, one day you're going to want to stop playing sound and do something. I think with the, um, the ideas and things that you have, you should try and go into the music at a bigger level. So we made um, some rhythms and I started to produce. And when I started to release the songs, now I felt that the record shops them that were around wasn't giving me no justice. So I decided that I need to open my own shop and sell my own records. You know how much I the changes in our music is, is being dramatic from I was here from Skia and Blue Beat was playing on the gram and until records came and then you used to go to the shops buy your records and then tape and cassette would come from Jamaica and you hear the tape and cassette and the different changes in the music within that time. The tempo is the main thing coming from the slow rock steady tempo to the reggae tempo and then them in the early 80s and the late 80s them come with um, more stepping, more faster beats that became known as dancehall music. But then it was all reggae and I believe that in, on a personal level the day that we started to segregate the music was like segregating all them segregate people. The people in England um, are very receptive to our music. From back when I was a youngster, they had Teddy Boys and the Mods, and they used to play like Desmond Decker and Toots and the Natals and the Bob Marley songs and things like that. And then what happened was that as we came to England, um, like I came in the late 60s and I went to school with the white boys then um, they started to listen what we were listening to because you didn't have no radio that played reggae so they would listen to your music that maybe you had on a tape and they would start to want to come to your dances and then those people that we grew with are now in their 50s so their children grew up listening to reggae as well as pop Right now, Jamaica, you yeah, hear me? This is my wish for Uno. Oh, the people, them, if only Uno could have lived in a love. You see, the music where we make and the love where we talk about is the only music in the whole entire world that preaches so much love. So, you see, if we could listen and do what we actually say, we, we preach, practice what we preach, then, then can't stop it. We're going far.